Renowned philosopher Slavoj Žižek warned there'll be no return to normal once the COVID pandemic's over. In an op-ed for uh, RT.com, the Slovenian-born academic added lockdown issues such as mental health can no longer be ignored. Indeed, it's one of the stories we're covering about young people today. But let's talk to him. He's on the line. He's made some time for us. Slavoj Žižek, welcome to the programme. Thanks for being with us, as always. Great to have you on the programme. Are you overstating the Thank case a bit, much. though, here? I'm just looking at this op-ed. You say there'll be no return to normality after COVID. We're entering a post post-human era and we'll have to invent a new way of life. People thought they were getting on with it pretty well. What's going to change so dramatically after COVID when this menace is done, maybe in the next 6, 12 months? First, I don't think the menace will be done. I think that uh, uh, it will drag on. We are not yet sure how vaccines will work, but especially I think that other viruses are waiting to attack us. Uh, there will be other troubles, like I worried about what I read this summer in uh, heat, global warming in uh, northern Siberia, on your Arctic Sea, and so on and so on. So I think a new age is coming, and that we should drop this nostalgia. Second thing, also, what what will happen depends on what we are doing now. And now it's not just a medical emergency. There are already alternate things are already changing. There are alternatives to, at least in the West, the capitalism that we knew. Greta Thunberg said that we learned three things from the pandemic. A, that we recognize crisis as a crisis. It's possible to do it. Second point, to give humanity health advantage, priority over economic interest. And, uh, and uh, third point, to take science seriously. Yes, these are possibilities opened by the pandemic, but they are already being twisted, in, like uh, giving priority to science. Yes, but there are many, many millions of those who precisely deny science or want to just isolate it, like let's go on with life, life like normal, let the scientists do vaccine. Priority of health over economy, not quite. Most of the money spent goes to help big companies. A new corporate capitalism is emerging, uh, is emerging uh, in the West, and so on and so on. So all these new openings can be twisted. Can, can any Christ. good come out of this? Can, can any good come out of it at the end of the day? Will the human race learn after the COVID pandemic? No, they, first, I'm a pessimist here. People <laughs> never learn. We didn't yet accept that a new era is beginning. I think we still dream of a return to old normality the way we knew it. And when I mention a little bit bombastically, I know, the, the entering post-human era, I think that this is... Uh, clear from those protesters, I don't agree with them, but I understand them, you know, those protesters who see the way of life imposed on them now, all the lockdown measures, uh, uh, con uh, controlling their digital lives and so on, wearing masks, as something incompatible with what, what we usually understood as being human. This is a serious crisis, not just health crisis, not just economic crisis, but even mental health crisis. Yeah. We feel yeah. that our being human, the way we understood it till now, is... Well, let's talk, about, let's talk about the mental health issues that are going to come out of this. We had a report we've been running all morning, worries about how it's affecting children. Depends what age they are, but, you know, it's going to have a, a knock-on effect to them for years to come. What about the older uh, members of the community, teenagers? We heard about those teenage suicides very early on, a lot of them. Uh, how are people going to be affected by this when they got over the initial shock of dealing with COVID? Maybe when the vaccine's out there, things ease off a bit. It's still going to be in people's heads, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, in the text uh, published on uh, Russia Today that you referred to, I draw on a comparison between, between what we call, it's more Eurocentric perspective, the first wave of the corona and what's going now. In the first way, it was, now we can say, almost a healthy panic. We were just afraid. It, it, there was a clear perspective. For a couple of months, we are isolated, then life will return. 
Now a, a strange thing is happening which is much more pathological. At the same time, people are afraid less. They try to go on, socialize, and so on. But there is a, a general depression going on. There is no clear perspective what will happen. Even when people do enjoy life, it's not this healthy enjoyment of now we are back at the normal. It's more a desperate enjoyment, like let's enjoy it while it lasts. Who knows what will happen? There is simply no clear perspective. And people also feel, although I am for tough measures, lockdown and so on, yeah. that many powers use this to establish mechanisms of control, which, of course, under any excuse... It's the worry of a lot of people, isn't it? But how far do you balance that worry off with what the medics are saying? You're saying you're for a tough stance on this. Do you believe masks, social distancing, they're a good thing? In this situation, yes. If we don't adopt these measures, then we can approach something even like social chaos, element of civil war, disorder will begin. But I think these measures of control should be very transparent to the people, explained to them, and so on and so on. People are right to feel that these tough measures are often just an excuse to set in motion power mechanisms which will remain. And that's, for me, the paradox of the developed step, uh, states, like United States. They claim we are the land of freedom, but they are much more controlled than in many so-called uh, rogue states in the United States. Population was never as controlled as now, which is why I also don't agree with that formula, social distances. No, we have bodily distancing, more or less. Yeah. But social distancing, no, we are more controlled than ever. <laughs> uh, our movements are controlled, our computers are controlled, and so on and so on. That's what worries me, that COVID will push us further into what I call a post-human state of being totally digitally controlled, maybe then there is on the horizon even the prospect of so-called wired brain, that our mind processes will be directly linked to computers. So definitely, I'm not exaggerating here. Well, Slavo, I, I know you had a lot more to say on this. Just telling our viewers, this is a small print of some of it. If they want to see what you've had to say there, it's always great to have you in the programme. Go to the op-ed section of our site, rt.com. Uh, type in Slavo Zizek there. You'll see it there. It's a really good read. For now, sir, thank you for being on the programme. Great to see you. You're always welcome on RT International. Have a good day.